Well, people, you join me coming up to the Conway Estuary. Now, I could do with a result this session because I have had four, two blanks in a row now. And this is the third one. I've had two fishing trips without a bite. I've been told there's a lot of cod in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have a good look in a minute. Um, see what's about. It's high water now. I have, well, it's, well, it's quarter to four on the evening now. It's high water. The low water is what I'm really here for, which is at nine o'clock tonight. Um, but I'm here now and I just feel I might have a flick around. The current here can be absolutely horrendous. Um, I've never caught a fish from here and I need to catch a fish. The cod are in, or should I say coddling, because they're little. Um, and I'm here now, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know what, this could be the one. I've got plenty of baits, peelers, squid, worms, I've got two rods, I've got about six or seven hours fishing. So let's get out the motor and go and have a look what's going on down there. As I say, it's high water now. There's a couple of people fishing off the extension there. There's somebody fishing down there. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have a chat to the people, see what's happening. But this is high water now, I didn't plan on fishing till low. I'll go and have a talk to that gentleman down there fishing and report back to you if he's had anything. Well then, I've just talked to that gentleman down there. Um, does watch the channel. <laughs> First thing he said, you don't want to add the bass. Uh, my van's there, behind the ring. And I'm going to be fishing just the other side of this extension, just down here, because the gentleman up there fished it about a week ago. I think he said about a week ago. <laughs> and um, Teddy fish from here. And he had a couple of codling. Um, crab is the bait, and luckily enough, I picked loads of fresh peelers up earlier. Uh, it's nice and close to the van. It's, it's kind of safe. He says I need to be hitting, you know, getting close towards that boy and that, but not a bother. I'll probably reach that arm more if need be. It's a small tide, so I shouldn't really worry about the uh, the current that much. Push you around the corner a little bit here, out the way, the main flow. Uh, so I'm going to get up to the van now. I'm going to tie a few rigs because I'm not coming down here so I've got four or five rigs tied. I'm going to set the rods up. I'm going to make some baits up, some cocktail baits, and then come down when I'm prepared because, as I say, it's only about four o'clock now in the afternoon. The low water I want to be fishing is nine tonight. I only want to be fishing from six-ish, really. Um, if I'm set up and ready before, I will, uh, of course, come down and chuck it in because you just never know. But I'm in no rush here, but oh, I need a fish, people. I desperately, desperately need a fish. Even though this mark is literally on my doorstep, it takes me, what, four minutes to get here? <laughs> I've never really explored it. And the Conway Estuary is known for good fishing. Um, it's picturesque, to be fair. That's where I'm going to be targeting, as I say, just there. The van's just behind there. But for boy we're here, we might as well have a little look around the arbor. I'll just see a couple of big bass jump out now. That'll change things up, won't it? Bloody hell, there's some money's worth of boats in here, people. Crikey. Got some of these bad boys. Wow. Wouldn't want to be chucking a lead in there, would you? <laughs> that was low. What was that? Was that a Hercules? Don't know why I've got Hercules in my head. That was low. Well, I'm at the van now anyway. Going to tie some rigs. Just spoke to the gentleman who's pulling off now, to my right. He spoke to somebody earlier down that side, um, by the arbor, and they've had a couple of little coddling yesterday. And he basically told me, um, if I'm fishing here with peeler crabs and I don't catch nothing, the fish aren't here. So I've got the two people I spoke to, the two fishermen, have uh, given me a bit of confidence, but I've never caught a fish from the Conway Estuary. So uh, come on, let's break that rut today, yeah? Here you go, people. I don't know who these are or what it is, but it's fishing and it's a local business. So if anybody's interested, there's all your info. And there it is, call Richie. Richie, I've no idea who you are. I don't know where you're from or anything, but a fellow fisherman who takes people fishing, so that needs sharing. This is where we are. Like, where am I? I don't even know where I am. We're, we are there, look, there. If anybody wants to know anything about this, Pause it now and read it. Right, I've started tying some rigs. Uh, obviously, I'm not fishing from there. <laughs> I reckon I could reach. I'm going to tie a few rigs up now. Some bits and bobs. And I'll probably, it'll be dark by the time I get out. Just having a tie of some rigs and stuff. We've got peeler carab. These are from Rose on Sea. 
So I'm going to tie a couple of pulley panels with single locks on and double locks for a bigger bait. And in here, still froze solid, we got some squid and some worms. I'll show you how I'll make some cocktail baits in a minute on the Cory Tull. But um, yeah, we've got some baits. Brand new buckets from B&Q today. And for filming, I knocked up this contraption after seeing Mike's salon light. My phone sits in there and it's all lit up, so I'm hoping we can have a good session. Everything's looking good. The spot's right, because I know there's a few come out. The bait's right, the rigs are going to be right, the lighting's good, the tide's right. Uh, the only thing that can possibly mess it up is me. <laughs> but yeah, um, shout out to the two guys from South Africa who just come and spoke to me. Uh, one said he's seen my videos before, a different one. I actually got stopped in the calf today in Colvin Bay too. Somebody came up to me and he called me Bassman for the big bass court. If you didn't know about the big bass court, here it is. <laughs> Flipped it though, I, was, uh, I caught it on... A full mackerel fishing for congas and us but i caught it well i'm happy to say i fluked it you know me i'll say it how it is no bull we yeah, a shout out to them guys uh just um had a good chat to them about carp fishing course fishing and all other stuff good to see you gents right what i'm gonna do i'll check back to you when i got these rigs tied ah uh, you got dark quick didn't it pitch black out there now right i've tied the rigs i'll show you in a minute uh quickly just want to say a couple of things um you might be wondering why is Mike not with me tonight? Uh, he won't fish this spot, and uh, I'll quickly inform you now. Uh, tragically, not so long ago, it was this year, uh, we lost a family member here, um, young girl, paddle boarding, and it's just a rough taste. I don't even like talking about it, but Mike's told me to mention it to bring awareness, and for Mike, I will mention it. If he didn't tell me to mention it, I wouldn't be bringing it up, but he's told me to, so... Uh, just basically paddle boarding, strong currents, falling off, few things that might have went wrong or whatever, and um, the poor girl's lost her life. So, you know, when you're fishing estuaries or, you know, st stuff with a strong pull, um, always be careful. Um, you know, I, I, this is one thing I like bringing up awareness, I always say when you fish, low water marks, um, Watch out for the tide behind you. Always try and go in pairs where possible in case somebody falls, slips. Um, this is the first time I've fished on my own for ages, and that's only because Mike won't fish this mark, and totally understandable why. But, um, yeah, I just thought I'd put that in here. Respect the water, people, because it's a nasty place. You know, we all love fishing. We all love jumping in in the summer. We all love water sports. We all love it, but um, the sea is a nasty place, and it can be... It can be so dangerous, so I just want to put that out, respect it. Go with others where you can. Anyway, Mike will be with me on all the other trips. Mike will be with me, he just won't be on this one. Um, but yeah, head over to his channel, um, that's a bite. Go and give him a like and a subscribe. And uh, Mike, I'll see you at the next video, mate. Right then, people, I've just tied four rigs, four pulley panels. I've tied two with single locks, that's a smaller rock, that's a bigger rock to fit the crabs that they are made for and I've tied a couple of pulleys with double locks for big sausage baits which I'll show you exactly how I make now. So what I'm going to show you now people is how to make some of these big sausage baits which stink. Basically these are my little peelers that are a bit small, no good for anything, not single lock baits. I've kept all my, my bigger peelers in there. Uh, and we're just basically going to be using this which I call the Cory Tool. It's a piece of 35 mil plastic pipe from B&Q, probably cost me about 30p that, just a bit of pipe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a bit of squid down. It's just a way to use loads of bits of crap bait and stuff to, um, to make a good bait, so we're going to put that there. Always put the crab in the middle. We'll peel his shell off first. I don't know why, but I always pull them two legs off. Don't know why, I just do, I'll leave the others on. Split them down the middle. And then that, that, is the, that is the main smell, that stuff. That's what's going to catch your fish. And I'll put that in the squid. The reason I put it in the squid is because when you wrap it, then that, that liquid, that smell, the crab, will stay in, start in the... Start again, will stay inside the squid for longer. It doesn't, like, instantly come out. What we do, we chuck a worm on there as well. And I'm sure you can all see what's happening here. <laughs> Nothing finesse about it. Get it in. What we're going to do... So once that's like that, I'm going to get the old bait elastic. This is a good way of um, just making baits up from little bits and offcuts and stuff. You're going to go around it a few times with a bait elastic. Tidy it up a bit at the end. You can even put a bit more squid on top, do whatever you got to do. 
fold them bits over. Oh, my crab's going. Get back, you little mush. No crabs was armed in the making of this video. They were just brutally murdered. <laughs> well, that's going to upset some people in it, the world we live in these days. Right, so we're going to wrap around there a few times. Not too much. Not too much, just like that. And we're going to snap that off. When you pull it out, you want to grab that biting elastic so you slide that down with your fingers like that. And you want to put your thumb there. So when you pull it out, grip it tight. And bump. What you get then is a sausage like that. Now inside that sausage, you've seen all the crab juice. If you give it a squeeze now, I don't want to squeeze it too much because I don't want to lose all my flavour, but watch. See all that? Look, all that juice and stuff, it's crab. So I'm going to make a few sausages now, different sizes and stuff. Look at the crab there. And that is the perfect way to get rid of your small crabs and your offcuts. So I'll get these baits made and I'll see you all when we get down to the spot. So what we've got here now is a load of dirty baits. That one's just a squid and lug. Look at all the lug in that. Look at the juices. Look at the crab juice coming out of these. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them for the one rod. Six big baits. And in here we have... All the peeler, the bigger peelers for the other rod. So surely we've got the right uh, setup plan. Just look at the look at the goodness in them. Right, let's get to the spot because I'm excited to send these out. Well, these aren't mine, but the guy who I spoke to earlier has just had them two. I've only just come down, so the future is looking good for me. Yeah, <laughs> hey, they're nice them. Okay, so I'm filming now. Obviously, <laughs> um, that guy's just showed me a couple of cod he's had. My biggest cod I've ever caught is about that big, so I'm itching to get the rods in. The double hook rod uh, with the bigger bait is going on the left. The one with a single crab on is going on the right. I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to bore you. I want them rods in. Let's go. Within a few minutes of the first cast, I had a little bit of action on the left rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was probably a bit eager here and a bit excited, a couple of little taps and I lifted up into it. Looking back at the video now, I should have definitely have left that, but after seeing the other guy's cod, I desperately wanted one. Anyway, if you like this type of stuff, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're rocking lately, we're hitting what? It's, well, the YouTube is absolutely rocking, around 54,000 followers now. We're getting like, every couple of days, there's another 100 to 150 new subscribers coming in. We're absolutely rocking. All the videos are getting like 10,000 plus views in the first few days. So I must be doing something right. I can't catch fish, okay? I can't catch fish. But I must be doing something right, yeah? Because <laughs> it's not fishing. <laughs> I think it's because I keep it real and show you how it is. Not going to lie though, I'm, I'm desperate for a cod from here tonight. Desperate for one, even if it's that big, I'm absolutely desperate. The crabs are out, bites are being smashed within minutes. That's what's left of one of my sausage bites. <laughs> no bait on that either. That was a peeler crab that was bound on very tight. No bait. <laughs> oh, crabs are destroying us. Bites are being stripped within five minutes now by crabs, so uh. I'll be changing every 10 minutes now. Hard fishing. Tidy bit of action on the right rod here, but nothing to go at, and definitely not the cod bite that I wanted. But there's something out there. In fact, there's loads of things out there. Loads of things with eight legs and hard backs. <laughs> Five minutes that peeler crab was in. You can see how well it was wrapped. It's still all around the shank. It's just been nailed. <laughs> I'm going to be out of bite in another 20 minutes. That was brilliant, that was. I caught one before him and he's got 54,000 followers. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's alright to put him on video, yeah, mate? I've got to ask the parents' uh, permission first, you know what it's like. Alright, so this is Leighton. Is that your first whiting, is it? Yeah. And the first thing you said is, I've caught one before him. <laughs> nice one, buddy, yeah? Yeah. See you in a bit, yeah? See ya. The video will be on in a couple of days, mate. Right. Now I've got to catch one now, yeah? I've got to get one one. <laughs> See you later, mate. <laughs> guess, guess who's in again? <laughs> that looks decent, that, mate. That's not fish out of fingers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Somebody's in again here. Oh, it's starving the show here. Fair play, mate.
<laughs> What's he say? You farted much? Because of the pressure. <laughs> that, that don't look like no white in that, dude. It's taking line. Go down with it, mate, and then pull it up, yeah? Fair play, mate. <laughs> so whiting on somebody else's line or something, isn't it? No, it's a crab net thing <laughs> and a whiting. Right, I've moved uh, to the left. Not right, funny enough. <laughs> but right, I've moved to the left. You get me. <laughs> uh, you know where the extension was? Where uh, the people was fishing earlier and I was just to the right of it. Well, now I've come about 50 yards to the left of it. Um, pretty much where the other dude was fishing who had that cod, or them cod, shall I say. Um, the young lad over there has absolutely smashed the bite in, fair play to him. I'm getting bites and taps and my bite's being stripped. At first I said crabs, crabs are doing me, now I think it could have been a load of white in smashing my big baits, because I'm fishing big baits. Um, so I've come over here, and I'm eating a few snags and rocks as well over there. So I've moved over here, I've literally got a couple of casts left on each rod because I've just been pummeled with bait so we're going to get them in now. Um, you know, my last two trips previous to this one have been blanks. I've got a couple of casts left. Three blanks in a row is going to be tough to take, especially when people each side of me have been catching but you know me people, real fishing, I'll post it as it is. Even though it alert me to post it, I will post it because you always get real from me. Right, let's get these out see maybe can we sneak something i've got well probably got half hours fishing tops it's about quarter to nine now i'll be off at quarter past nine ish with a bait situation well that's going to be me signing out people i've just put the rods back in it's my last two baits i've got two peeler crabs on the right one wrapped in a big bundle and i've got on the left one <laughs> squid tentacles crab legs and bits of worm and everything wrapped into a sausage from out the bucket totally out of bait now. If you don't hear from me again, it's the third blank in a row. <laughs> oh, it's so painful, but it's just nice to be out to be fair. The blank's not too bad when you've seen a, you've seen a young lad have some fish. I've seen some cod on the bank, so have you. I'm only five minutes from home. Van's only there, so within 10 minutes I'll be in the kebab shop waiting for food. I've not got snagged, so I ain't lost any gear. Um, and it's real fishing, it's just how it is. So it's going to be me signing out now. So if you don't see me again, that's it. I'll be back. Don't forget to subscribe because I will be back here, and I am on the Congress the weekend. But uh, yeah, if you don't see me again, that'll be me signing out, people. Catch you all in the next video, yeah?